Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Taranja with the Citizenship Academy. We are on Domain 2, Lesson 7, Tenochtitlan, Center of the Aztec Empire. Our objectives for today, today are to determine the main ideas and key details about the Aztec capital city of Tenochtitlan and use information to compare and contrast the Maya and Aztec civilizations and develop our paraphrased information into a logical expl explanatory paragraph for your codex project. Our key vocabulary for today, swampy, resembling wet spongy land often partly covered with water, Habitable, habitable, fit to live in. Marsh, soft, wetland, often overgrown with grasses. Artificially, in a way that does not exist in nature. Emperor, a ruler who has a total control of a region. A commoner, a person who is not part of the noble class. Peaked is pointed. Transport a ca to carry from one place to another. Bustling, busy with activity. And nourishment is food and other things that are needed to live and be healthy. Our purpose for reading our text for today is to read, read to learn about the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. What factors led to the success of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan? That's what you're looking for when you go into the text. Now, I've been practicing a lot to pronounce Tenochtitlan, so I apologize. So it's it, these are very tricky words because it's obviously in a different language. So here is a pronunciation table to help you figure out um, how to spell, how to sound out words. So this word is Texcoco. That's how you would pronounce that. Chinampa, right here. Wizuopotli. Oof, sorry, that's not very pretty, but it's hard to pronounce unfamiliar words. Tioloc. Ulame me litli, or uyame listli. Kaupulyin. Kalpulye, and Magi, or Magai. So again, these are very tricky words. So if when you're reading the text today, you are unfamiliar with how to pronounce something, you can refer back to in this video to this pronunciation table. Okay, we are going to do our five minute pause. Be, feel free to pause this video at any time to really read through the text. We want to make sure you are reading everything independently, please. Okay, so our word work for today is peaked. So this is um, this picture is an example of the peak of a mountain. So right here is the pointed part of a mountain. So these one-story houses often have a peaked thatch roof. So this is what they refer to as a peak. So you might notice a house has a peak to it as well. So this is actually an adjective. So now we're going to be planning and drafting our paragraph for our codex project. You're going to work to organize your notes uh, that you took about your Mayan cultural aspect, and you're going to put it in a structure uh, that for an informative and explanatory paragraph. And you're going to compose from those fragments or those paraphrases that we used uh, previously. Um, by following that process, you're going to have a clear and informative paragraph. So. You're going to use this format in order to create your paragraphs. So you're going to A, have a topic sentence that introduces the topic or main idea and tells what the paragraph is going to be about. Supporting sentences explain the topic or main idea using those details and facts. And a concluding sentence that ends that paragraph with your final thought. And it goes beyond uh, the end of the fair. So, so it goes beyond the facts to the end of the paragraph, sometimes with an opinion. And remember, your supporting sentences, you should have three to five sentences for that body, that middle of that paragraph. So you should have um, 
seven, five to seven sentences um, for your paragraph, not just two or three. So in level three, I showed you um, an example of a paragraph that was written in that format. It was about that Maya geographical feature. So if at any time you don't really remember that paragraph, you can go back to lesson three's video and rewatch uh, towards the end where I go through how to format that sentence. So you're going to begin by choosing the words and phrases to introduce the main idea or topic of your paragraph. Then you're going to choose the supporting details to go together. Um, to supplant, explain that main idea, and then you're going to kind of find, give up a final thought and opinion on it. You're going to use that planning note side column. So I know um, in the previous few videos, I told you to leave that planning notes um, blank. You're going to actually use it now because it's going to help you figure out what where you're going to use all of those. So for example, if you found um, one of those notes to be a good um, topic sentence, you're going to make a note of that in the planning notes. Uh, once you've identified the paraphrase notes that you want to use in your draft, um, when drafting your topic, you're supporting and you're concluding, you're going to go ahead and start drafting your paragraph and you're going to use your notes to guide your writing. So what that means is you are going to first, before you even start doing your draft, you need to organize your thoughts. You guys took some phenomenal notes previously, so we want to make sure that you're, you know exactly where in your writing you want to use those notes. So is it going to be part of your topic sentence? Is it going to be part of your supporting details? Or is it going to be part of your concluding sentence? And then once you know where everything is going to go and have your idea of the layout, that's when you start drafting. I mentioned that I would show this again. This is the rubric that we're going to use in order to uh, look at your writing. Um, so we want to make sure, so when you're drafting, keep these elements in mind because we want to make sure you're you're aiming for you know these ends and not over here if we see these we're not gonna we're not gonna show it's not gonna show very strong writing so we want to make sure your topic sentence relates to uh, the big idea we want you to have plenty of supporting details we want it, everything to relate and we also want to make sure you are not copying directly from the story I know that's been familiar before but that is a form of plagiarism and we do not want that. So if we see that um, there's that there's words directly from a text, we're going to say something about it because it's really, really important that we paraphrase. So that is what you are working on for your assessment for today. So you are working on the draft, but remember you're completing your planning page first, then completing your draft. When you're done with that, you're going to send that to your teacher um, so they can look it over. And we will see everyone in our next lesson.